Hi, it's Kristen. Today I'm going to show you how to create a realistic notebook in Photoshop Elements. I'm going to be doing this utilizing some Traveler's Notebook templates by Soko. I will be utilizing shapes, shadows, and I will be using a gradient fill, which will be black to transparent, to create the illusion of a dimensional scrapbooking page to make create this notebook. So let's go ahead and get started. As I said, I will be utilizing these as my base, these great Traveler's Notebook layered templates by Soko. I'll be using number four and number eight. The other uh, kit that I'll be using also by Soko is called It's the Little Things and that's what I'll be utilizing to finish off my page later on um, with papers and some some of these uh, cute little elements. So with that said I'm going back to my uh, back to my finished product. Um, my project today I had taken some pictures while my husband had been making some miniature calzones with some leftover pizza dough that we had um, the other night and so I took some pictures and so I thought that this would be great for my little traveler's notebook uh, to explain the process and um, it's it really made for really cute pages uh, what I think anyway so that's um, where this came from and as you can see these are the um, templates this is number four that uh, from Soko's Traveler's Notebook uh, templates this is number four the other one I'm using is number eight and side by side when you utilize them um, it becomes very flat so that's why I really like um, adding the dimension with the uh, trans uh, the black to transparent gradient on the page folds um, also to make it look like a real little book using some shapes I'm creating a cover for the book some some of these folds for the clasp um, and the uh, the little hook here and like I said some some of the shadowing so that it'll create like it's it's folded and it gives you more of that three-dimensional look so let's go ahead and get started we're going to open up a new workspace and I'm going to flood fill this um, the background contents with white so that's where I'm starting already with a white background the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my um, rounded rectangle tool with the radius of the corners to be 10 and I'm going to choose a gray tone as my fill for my uh, rounded rectangle and I'm just going to draw out a uh, square here in the center um, actually a little bit longer than it is wider um, for my notebook and when I let go that automatically fills it in and as you can see it has the little rounded uh, corners I'm just going to um, go ahead and because this is a shape I'm going to just uh, simplify the layer and I'm just going to rename this cover so we know that that is the cover um, later on uh, when I go to finish off my page I'll end up um, putting a paper and and some pattern over that so um, but this is what I'm going to be using as the cover um, let's go ahead and I want to adjust my cover just slightly um, I'm going to use the marquee tool the elliptical marquee tool and I just want to just from the edge of where that roundness starts over to the other side um, just oh, about that is good let go I'm just going to add a new layer let's go ahead and add a new layer and I'm just going to flood fill this right now with black just so we can see it and it is on its own layer so there we go all right now I'm going to uh, control D to turn off the marching ants I'm just going to slide this up using my arrow tool and as you can see by my putting that um, elliptical shape tool here at the top it has um, it will end up showing like it'll be bowed so let's go ahead we need to 
going to be masking that out of my shape. So let's go ahead and control and the thumbnails, put the marching ants back on that shape. Go to your cover and let's go ahead and hold down the alt on a PC or option on a Mac and click on the layer mask icon. And when you do that, it will, as you can see, it has masked out the top end of the book cover. So now I want to create, I want to move that book cover um, elliptical. I'm going to move that down to the bottom of my shape here. And I'm going to do the same. Let's see, I want to make sure that this is even. Bring that, oops, bring that up just a little bit. So it's even, so that's good. And I'm going, again, I'm going to um, hold down the control and press on the elliptical um, shape here to put the marching ants back on. And then click on my layer mask here in the cover and fill that with black. And now if you turn off that, you now have the ellip at the bottom. Okay, so now that we've done that, now we can just go ahead and get rid of that layer with the ellipse in there. So I'm just going to delete that. And now I can go ahead and I can add a shadow. So I'm going to just click on my styles, drop shadow. I'm going to choose from the selection. And I'm just going to pick a soft shadow. All right, go back to layers now. I'm just going to double click on my shadows and I'm just going to change the lighting angle to 45. Now I'm going to press OK. So now I have my shadows on the edges of my book. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to still use that same rounded rectangle. I'm just going to add a new layer above the background layer and I'm just going to make a small um, rectangle on the side here. Uh, again, I'll go ahead and just change the color. We'll change it to gray. Um, same shade. And that's fine. <clears throat> With the constraints of 10, uh, I'm sorry, the radius of 10 on the corners, uh, same as our, our um, cover going to right click. We're going to simplify it. Well, um, hold down the shift on your FX and just drag that to your shape. Oops. Go ahead and I'm sorry, the alt key, click on the, the uh, FX in your alt key, and that'll put the same effect on the clasp. We're going to go ahead and do control J and duplicate that and then move that same shape. We're going to move that to the other side using our arrow tool. And we will go ahead and add that to the other side so that it'll be even on each side. I'm just quickly moving as quick as my little arrow can go. And once I have that on the other side, then we'll just add a, a little circle to work as the loop. Okay. And now I'm using the shapes and we'll go for a custom shape. I have the circle here with the tint. I'm going to um, use the gray and again, with my um, background layer in the background selected, just do a little circle there. And again, Alt and grab the FX and move that down so you have the same uh, style. Go ahead and simplify that. So now I have my little hook and, and the two um, the two side 
areas. Okay, so now we have the um, basis for our, our cover. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to bring in the, the templates from the, the traveler's notebook. And I have this, so we'll just open that. I'm going to highlight all of the layers, right click, duplicate layers, and when this brings it op up, just go ahead and look for your workspace. Mine is called Untitled One and select that and then say OK. And when you do that, if you look at your workspace, it has put it all underneath. So just grab them while they're all highlighted in the layer panel and drag them up above the cover. And now you can, with the bounding boxes, just go ahead and uh, just going to OK and just grab and resize because we, we're going to want to um, place them side by side. So go ahead and resize them. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to do the same with the other template for the other side. While I have them still here, I'm just going to make sure that all of these are linked. So that this way, if I want to move this, it's all together. Okay. And now we'll do that for the other side. Okay, now that I have both of them side by side, as you can see, it's kind of flat and it really is kind of one dimension and we want that, um, we want to add life to it. So what I'm going to do here is first I want to, uh, this bottom layer of the, um, of the left side of the uh, book, I just want to duplicate that layer because this is going to be our extra page so just go ahead and duplicate that the bottom of it just uh, that bottom one just unlink just by clipping on that because we we don't want that attached to the rest and then just go ahead and with um, the bottom layer unselected um, go above and get that photo frame drop shadow that all the way up to the label or word bit and hold down your shift key and click on the layer or word bit and once that is highlighted just with your with your mouse right click on the mouse and create clipping mask and what that did was it click it took all of this and clipped it to that um, base page we want to do the same thing with the right side Go ahead and duplicate that layer, right click and duplicate that layer, unlink it, and then go ahead and select all of these and write create a uh, clipping mask. So now you have these all clipped on the right side. And now let's go ahead and give this right side um, page Let's go ahead and give that a light uh, or a low shadow. Just go ahead and click on styles, look for your drop shadows, and click on low. That's going to give a slight shadow here to the bottom. And I want to make that even lighter. It's a little bit too, too much for me. Um, I'm going to make that size five and the distance I'm going to make it um, I'm going to make it one okay and a 45 degree angle is fine go ahead and select okay now we want to do the same um, go to the extra layer there on that right hand side and now I want to click on distort so do image transformation and distort and what we want to do is we want to just grab just a little bit and move um, move that paper down just a little bit 
on both the top and the bottom so it kind of you can kind of see the extra page and then click OK and because you've already added uh, we need to add the shadow to that as well go ahead and just hold down your alt on the shadow FX and then drag it down to the layer below so now you can see where the paper um, it looks like we have extra paper we're just going to do that on the other side and I'll be right back now I'm going to go ahead and add the black to transparent gradient so that it'll give a fold illusion first thing we need to do is make sure that our foreground and our background are black and white you can just click on your um, select D on your keyboard and that will change it to black and white once that's set then go ahead and click on the gradient tool you can also get there by pressing G on your keyboard and as you can see down here it's showing transparent uh, black to transparent if it doesn't show that just click on this and you'll get your gradients here you can always uh, make your own gradients but we want for today we want the um, foreground to transparent black to transparent gradient the next thing we want to make sure is that the um, reflected gradient tool is chosen so with that said go to we're on the we're going to be on the left side so I want to go up here to the top of the left side and I want to add a new layer go ahead and click on your new layer icon then we want to clip that so go ahead and right clip uh, right click with your mouse and create clipping mask so in that clipping masked blank layer is where we're going to be putting the black to transparent gradient with that selected with your mouse um, go to mid point of your right hand side of your um, of the, the layout and drag with your mouse all the way over to um, middle of the left side of the template and then let go and now that has put a black to transparent gradient on that side you want to maybe lower the opacity just a little bit I made that about 82 percent so that's on that side now we want to do it on the right side so we're going to do that same step go up to the top add a new layer right click create clipping mask and with the gradient tool the same we're going to go from the left hand side over to the right and again we're adding that black to transparent gradient and we want to drum dial down the opacity on that um, a little bit uh, maybe about 67 percent so here we have 82 percent we have 67 on the other or 66 so now that gives it the fold here um, and it looks like the page is open from here uh, basically all we're going to do is add our accents our um, our photos our uh, journaling so I'll go ahead and I'll take you through um, just what I did with the um, with my my page so now I'm going to go ahead and turn on all the different layers so you can see how I did that Here I'm adding the background, some shading, and, <clears throat> and the papers. Then I'm going to be adding on to the, um, the shapes. I'm adding my papers with some, uh, some texture to them, doing that on both sides. Um, then I'm also doing the cover of my book. Then I'm adding the pages. I'm adding some texture. I'm adding some of the um, elements and the photos and then I'm adding the black and whites and I'm doing this for all of my layers just going ahead and putting everything in 
changing, adding black and white layer um, adjustment layers. I'm adding my papers and my gradients. And as I complete this, as you can see, as I've added the elements and just by doing the shading and the, um, and the papers to my, um, and the shading, the shadows and the elements to my page, I've created my little traveler's notebook and it has a more realistic feel. So I hope that this has helped you and I hope that um, you will enjoy creating your own new notebook. I look forward to seeing yours. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.